Top the review. Number 16. Spitting. Red card. Final decision. Red card. For <laughs> Um, I'll have to look at what Hector did and what that looks like. I, I, I know it was, I don't know, we've had five red cards against Seattle in the last two years, five, six, I don't, I don't even know. It just seems like every time we play them, uh, we end up getting red cards. So it's a, a little bit of a, a rivalry there. And, but we have, to, we have to make sure we're smart and give ourselves the, the, the best opportunities to win. Uh, so um, yeah, those are my thoughts overall. Happy to take questions. Nope. No, I haven't talked to him about it. Um, just to uh, address the team, uh, but no, no individuals. Um, I, I, I'm assuming, uh, from what I hear, uh, he spat at the referee. And uh, anytime you do that, uh, you're uh, you're at the mercy of these guys. And referees make a moment um, uh, like that. And of course, okay, you can you can throw the book at him, but. The way he manages the first half, and I, I don't want to get into it because it's, it's, it's sour grapes at this point, but again, the way he manages the first half is unacceptable, and that boils up into the second half, and halftime becomes the guys bitching about the referee, and so I don't think he did a good job. I don't think the referee in Seattle did a good job. So it's no excuses. Seattle's a damn good team. They're hard to break down. They're experienced, and they won two PKs. But over the two series, uh, or two games, I felt like, um, you know, uh, we didn't get as fair a shake. That, they, that doesn't mean that, that was the reason. You know, both can be red cards. Uh, but again, the, the management of these games, I, I thought both of them could have did a better job to not let that uh, kind of start to brew. And, and again, both of them weren't, weren't, weren't at their best, but uh, neither were Coco and neither were Hector in that moment. So it's not all on them change games and and that's on uh that that's on uh, on hector and that's on me as a coach that needs to have a, a team that's disciplined and uh so that uh, that that that's my take on, on this game and i have no doubt that we uh even down a man at times we were we were threatening and uh, so yeah i didn't see it i still haven't seen what hector did i'm assuming it's a no-no. Whatever he did, and I'm assuming, again, you can throw the book at that if, if it is some type of, if he spat at him. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I want to see it first before I, I, I you know, but I, I do think at times these guys get so caught up in the letter of the law, and they, they just forget about the feel of a game. And sometimes they can have, a, referees can have a thicker skin in this moment. But I haven't seen it. So if, if it's what I, Envision it and what I've heard, you're at the mercy of the court. No, I mean, I, I, you know, it'd be tough to say that doesn't have factor into it. Uh, I think there's a lot of factors that go into any decision you make within a roster. Um, you know, for us, uh, Hector, uh, I would term has probably been the greatest signing, if not certainly one of the top signings that the club has ever had in its history. Uh, he, he helped turn a franchise that had uh, continually... Uh, certainly over the last eight years, I had a difficult time making the playoffs and sustaining success and, and turned us in. His 23 performance was uh, probably the best performance by a Dynamo player in history of the club in one season. You know, he was, there was a small discussion about him as an MVP, made a best 11. Uh, we hosted a U.S. Open Cup, made the playoffs for the first time in what seemed like generations. <laughs> but uh, I, I think a lot of things factor into it. You know, part of it is uh, designated players do get judged at a different level than than a roster player. I mean, in the end, you're paying the ownership group is uh, paying a lot of money for for these guys, and and the reality was, unfortunately, this year he was only available for about fifty percent of our minutes, and even part of that was still him trying to get fit. Um, we had an opportunity. He had an opportunity uh, in his contract is to to be able to show that he could stay fit, stay on the field, and us get the playoffs. We held on our end of the bargain of making the playoffs, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to stay fit uh, enough. And part of that started right at the right out of the gate this year. So a lot of factors go into it. Um, you know, I think uh, you know the incident that happened. I, I don't think we condone that spitting on any opponent. That's you know, whether it's an opponent, whether it's a referee, it's just just unacceptable and, and not accepted in our game. And I'm sure he would be the first guy to tell you that, that he kind of lost his mind for a moment. Um, but, you know, that's not the determining factor why we made this, but everything plays into it. 
Hunt. Yeah, I mean, this. I mean, we we've been talking. I have a good relationship with his agent and a good relationship with Hector. So we've had lots of conversations. The season has gone on, um, and I think for us it was evaluate how how the postseason went as well uh, was a big big part of it. But um, the one thing I'll give him is he wanted to be here. He wanted to be in Houston. I think he's you know upset that we decided to to kind of part ways and move on. Um, uh, but for us, I think uh, it, it's important for us to make sure that it, out of those that position, the designated player position, when I say that, is that we're getting minutes. And this year has been a bit dif disappointing from our standpoint for you know, part of part of that is the executive, part of that is uh, the players, but we're, we need to get our designated players on the field as much as we can.